Today we're taking a look at the Noctua NFA 2200mm glass fan. Uh, let's get right into it here on Computer Tech and more. So before I get into the graphs, I recently did a series of tests, or fairly recently, depending on when this came up, did a series of tests on my case simulation test where I tested 180 versus one fan, two fan, uh, 120s, 140s, and uh, one of each, two of each, that sort of thing to show airflow through it um with different quality fans and how important it is and kind of that kind of thing so i hope you check that out and this is going to use a lot of that same data four key measurement locations represent different size cases so the six the nine the 11 and the 14.5 inch mark represent small form factor cases that are still front to back airflow type designs it's also representative of short throw distance meaning you put the fans at the bottom of your case and you blow air up into your gpu and the only case design that I can think of that would be applicable for it would be the fractal design torrent, which we're going to talk about in a second. The 90s work is represented by compact towers. Think being able to fit a standard ATX motherboard with GPU of the length of the motherboard with no extra room there. Uh, and then we have the 11 mark, which is a compact or mid tower case. And then we have the 14.5 inch mark, which is like the fractal design torrent, the front to back airflow. And depending on what size. Uh, case you plan on buying, you'd focus in on that uh, data set location to determine which fan is best for you. Now, this is sort of where things are tricky. So larger diameter fans tend to fill the volume of the case more effectively, which means the lines tend to be flatter. So in that scenario, you want as high an air speed as possible at the back of your case or whatever uh, measurement location we're caring most about. Now that all that is said, I'm directly comparing the A20 versus the X2GP18 in the next couple graphs because it is the largest diameter fan that I currently own. So this is noise normalized. My teal line here is labeled as the control fan. It is three parts A12X25 to one part A14. And I found that 120 millimeter class fans to do really what the six and nine inch mark, while larger 140 millimeter class fans tend to do better at the 11 and 14 and 14.5 inch mark. Now this test is airspeed. So it's pretty clear that these two bigger fans outperform at longer distances, the control fan. However, at shorter distances, so the six and nine inch mark, uh, that one fan has a higher airspeed. Um, again, that is not a volumetric flow rate for the one, for the hundred and quote, 30 millimeter class fan. It is just airspeed. Um, so airspeed matters to get air past a heat generating device like your CPU air cooler or your GPU, but volumetric flow rate is the amount of air that is being pushed through the case. So in the end, you want high both, but around heat generating components, my general opinion is you want a little bit better high speed uh, sacrifice over just pure volume. At 100% PDO and fan signaling, uh, the A20 drops back quite a bit. It just doesn't have the same sort of high RPM that uh, that the X2 GP has. It is just much more limited, so it doesn't quite spike as high. Mind, it's at 14.5 inches, it's not bad, but the X2 GP 18 is just substantially better. Although the 18 is almost twice as loud as the A20, but it's also moving 70% more air. So you can't have your cake and eat it two, I guess. Let's move on. So how does it compare against other tests in this test suite? So this is where I talked about I'm kind of reusing the same data. So I tested one A12X25 versus two A12X25s in my case simulation test. Uh, one, two, one X2 GP14 versus two X2 GP14s, and that's our 140 millimeter class fan. Um, and we do see that two A12X25s are the top performer here. So quality of fan really does matter. And when we take a look at noise normalized results, the A20 is sitting right here, kind of middle, especially by the 14.5 inch mark. So it's doing really quite well. It's outperforming or performing really in this nice little tight pack, but it doesn't have the same sort of uh, airspeed at those shorty distances that several other fans have. So indicating that it does have a very efficient design, at least at filling a volume of air to then move it to the back, 
but it's just lacking in overall RPM to actually deliver the air. Um, at 100%, well, it's at the bottom, but uh, you can see this brown lane is 1 A12X25. It is just blowing it out of the water and it is blowing 140 millimeter, millimeter class fan out of the water. So um, that's good. So if, if you can fit two 200 millimeter class fans, but you can only fit 240s, that doesn't work in most computer cases. So you'd actually be looking at a large computer case where you could actually fill the front with fans uh, with uh, with the A20. So uh, it puts it into a really weird position. Like if you're in a smaller case where you're at like 120 or yeah, one 200 millimeter class fan or two 120s or two 140s, you'd be better off with the two 120s or two 140s than the 200. But if you're talking 1120, 1140, or 1, 1, or 1 uh, 200, you'd be better off with the 200. So it's just this really weird ground for this fan. In noise performance, the Noctua A20 is sitting right here, very middle of the pack, until we hit higher RPMs where it just kind of flattens out. And yes, very interestingly that two fans are not twice as loud as one fan. It's only a couple decibels louder for more airspeed or even for similar airspeeds. So more is not always more no too much more noisy. Let's do our open box uh, experience and blade analysis. Directly compared it to like the, um, what's it called? The X2 GP18, the 180 millimeter class fan from Fractal. It's just the closest comparative one that I have at my disposal currently. I haven't tested that many large diameter fans. And uh, so that one has a pretty different blade design, but overall still has thicker blades. And the main reason for a wide thick blade is actually going to be because basically mass, moment, and inertia. So as you spin something, the tip speed is substantially faster than uh, the tip speed at an inner lower or smaller radius. So you actually need enough material so that it prevents it from stretching too much. Uh, otherwise, you could run into interference problems where the blades would run into the sidewalls, which is why you actually see that it actually has a pretty wide distance between the blades and the walls because they're anticipating some of that stretching going on. Um, and that stretching does occur uh, on any play design with pretty much any material over time. And uh, you're just looking at ways to prevent it from happening more quickly. And as not to as usual, the... Uh, blades have these little grooves on it to help direct airflow around it so that it creates a nice streamlined airflow. The inner hub on it is huge. Look at the size of that. So, um, I don't know. My personal opinion is I don't really think it looks cool. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I think that the 180 on the Fractal looks a little bit cooler. But uh, certainly, you know, you put this thing in a case, it'll look awesome regardless because I saw a custom... Uh, a torn PC case using these and it looked amazing. Uh, if you're an Octo fan, go for it. Uh, certainly should be more reliable than um, and uh, consistent than Fractal's fans. So that's really what it comes down to. Is like if you need to replace the fans, this is a fine fan to go with. But otherwise, you might as well just stick with what the case comes with. And this video series is a little bit on the short side. We don't do the uh, CPU cooler test or CFM test. I just don't have that testing apparatuses to test 200 millimeter class fans. And this fan is really not designed for um, CPU coolers. But um, it's value proposition right here. So we have the uh, A20 right here in the middle. $37, $38 dollar fan. Mind, I've seen a couple prices as low as 25 so there's a little bit of a mixed bag there. So I would say mid-30s in terms of price, looking like more like 36 is what I consider an acceptable price for it, for its value proposition. So 
uh, looking at that for the six inch mark uh, noise normalized on 100 it's actually doing pretty okay um, especially compared to other fans in its similar type category um, at 100 percent it's dropped back quite a ways so it just it's lacking that top end at the 11 inch mark it's doing again really quite well it's outperforming many of the other fans around it, especially when you're comparing two fans versus one fan and it is outperforming the s2 gp18 but once again when we're looking at 100 percent the s2 gp18 is just the better choice and this brings me to kind of an odd thing about this fan um your case design needs to be able to fit a 200 millimeter class fan first and second, a lot of cases aren't actually designed for 200 millimeter class fans. Like the the housing brackets that hold the fans in place will actually be blocking some of the 200 millimeter class fan, either on the front or on the back. Either way, it's going to be blocking airflow. So you're not actually benefiting as much from that larger fan as you otherwise would. So in that circumstance, you're probably actually better off getting whatever size the maximum that case will actually fit without blocking off any airflow. So at the end of every video, I like to show off my raw data. This data does belong to me. It takes, well, this one's actually a little bit shorter. So this one only took like an hour to generate this level of data. Um, but the data does belong to me. If you would like to use it for your own personal use, meaning put it into Excel to create your own graphs and charts, you are more than welcome to do so. However, if you're going to use it in any sort of publication, written journal or anything like that, please reference me in my channel. After all, I'm the one who put the effort into uh, doing it. Um, suggestions for more fans? Please leave in the comment section below. If you got suggestions on ways I can improve my videos, I'm looking for constructive criticism, make it more enjoyable to watch, please leave that in the comment section down below because I'm always trying to make it more enjoyable for you, the viewers. Um, I have plans for how I want this channel to grow. Uh, to do better testing, better testing methodology, better equipment to gather the data. But all of that, I need help from viewers like you. Hitting that subscribe button goes a long way. But if you um, like what I'm doing, want to see, you know, fund it, see, help it grow faster, stronger, whatever you want to call it, uh, go ahead and uh, see me on Patreon or join me on Patreon or become a YouTube member if you're comfortable with that. Every penny that comes from that goes directly into funding this channel uh right now i'm looking at needing around two thousand dollars and to basically bump me up to the next level um i'm not I'm, I'm not begging for anybody to to go ahead and do that i want to make sure that you're all comfortable before you give me any money um but regardless of whether i receive any of it or not i'm going to try to keep continuing to make videos and uh, do it the best that I can with the equipment that I have currently. Anyways, thank you very much for watching my video here on Computer Tech and More. I know that ending was kind of uh, serious here, and um, I want to be completely honest and upfront with all of you on the internet. It's just the way I am. And uh, I hope to see you next time. Thank you.